This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Sunday morning. I'm Tim Gordon. This morning on Sunrise, we've seen a lot of changes to city streets. While they're designed to accommodate drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians, not everyone is happy about some recent changes in downtown Portland. Plus, millions of dollars in unexpected tax revenue could help pay for Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler's plan to combat homelessness. We break down how this excess money accumulated. But first, let's check in with Chris McGinnis for a look at our Sunday forecast. And Chris, you're talking snow? Maybe. For starters, yes, we are talking about snow, but let's just say this. It's going to take a little holiday magic to actually get snow on the valley floor in Portland. That said, a winter weather advisory is in effect here for much of Western Oregon through the Columbia River Gorge and uh, east of the Cascades. There's no question that you folks there will see accumulating snow, but uh, through the west side and in the valley, let's show you what's going on here over the last two hours or so. Uh, precipitation beginning to fill in as we expected, and it'll probably start off as a rain snow mix. As you can see here on radar over the last two hours, we've got a band of precip that's working its way northward. All of this is as expected. This will probably fill in as we go through the morning hours and as the precipitation rates drop off, that will probably start to drop our temperatures just a little bit. That said, if you're looking at this temperature map, you're saying there's no way it's going to snow in Portland and Vancouver at 40 and 39. You're right, but check this out. Scappoose is at 33. Right, we slip south into the Willamette Valley. We've got Lebanon checking in with 31. So there are some cold pockets out there. And as the precipitation fills in, we get what we call evaporative cooling. That will cool the atmosphere a little bit. So therein is uh, the first thing that we're watching. And the capacity for the air to cool a little bit is there because right now the air is very, very dry. So as this mixed rain and snow falls into this atmosphere, it's going to have to do a lot to saturate things. But the point is, we're 39 degrees. We're above uh, freezing here in Portland. The best chance for accumulating snows today is probably at elevation above 500 feet, but I'll walk you through Futurecast and show you kind of how that band sets up over Portland and Vancouver a little bit later on this morning. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, interesting forecast for sure. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, this is perfect for people who like the cold weather. Check it out. Ski Bowl is now open up on Mount Hood. Opened yesterday afternoon. Guests hit the slopes to kick off the season for that. And for now, Ski Bowl is only opening the lower and upper bowl lifts along with the parking lot conveyor lift. But more snow to come. Ski Bowl, fun place to be. Well, you've probably seen all the changes to city streets. Peabot wants to accommodate all of the drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians. But as Mike Benner reports, some recent changes to a street in downtown Portland are not sitting well with everyone. It's no secret that downtown Portland is still trying to come back from the pandemic and all of that civil unrest back in 2020. But there are business leaders, one you're about to hear from, who believe this new guarded bike lane is not helping the cause one bit. You'd be hard pressed to find a Portlander or even a frequent visitor to the city who is not familiar with the Heathman Hotel, a fixture at the corner of Southwest Salmon and Broadway since the late 1920s. One of the first luxury boutique hotels to go up in the city. Marjorie uh, Walsh has been the general manager of the Heathman for about a year. She'll tell you for the last several months, she's been stressing about what's been happening right outside the front doors of the hotel. It's definitely been operationally challenging for us. Walsh is referring to what the Portland Bureau of Transportation did on Southwest Broadway. As part of what's called the Southwest Broadway Bike Improvements Project, Peabot put a bike lane right up against the curb and street parking adjacent to that. We've had a lot of really close calls with guests coming out of their vehicle and almost getting hit by a bicycle coming up the lane. Um, we had an incident where a guest's door got hit by a bicyclist. According to Walsh, her own staffers have had trouble just doing their job. And she says the hotel's valet zone has been cut in half due to the facelift on Broadway. Realistically, when loading vehicles and unloading vehicles, that gives you about two vehicles that'll fit in your valet zone. Um, so obviously a hindrance to our business operation as well. Walsh's concerns are not lost on the Transportation Bureau, but Peabot spokesperson Hannah Schaefer says the city continues to grow. There are more and more drivers, pedestrians and cyclists all with their own needs. We do have to balance all the various needs and we need to make our streets safer for all our different users and prioritizing people on bikes and making it safer for them is a priority for us as we work to meet our climate goals as a city. But it won't come without hiccups, as we saw while shooting video near the Benson Hotel. Close calls like this one 
are what bother Marjorie Walsh. From a liability perspective, it's something we're highly concerned about, again, both from guests coming, but our own employees as well. Walsh tells us she plans to put up cameras outside the Heathman Hotel to keep an eye on what she says has become a hazard. Reporting in downtown Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. At Portland, police arrested a dozen people on Friday night after a car theft mission. Along with the arrests, officers recovered six stolen vehicles, an illegal gun, and 39 grams of meth. The Portland Police Bureau explains the operation. The purpose is to find stolen cars that are out rolling around. These are cars that are being actively used for other crimes. Police have recovered more than 100 stolen vehicles, arrested 169 people, and seized 24 illegal firearms since November 2021. Well, this week, the Portland City Council approved spending millions to help build designated campsites as part of the mayor's plan to tackle homelessness. Ted Wheeler's office put out a press release calling on Multnomah County to contribute more for the camps. Uh, the mayor claiming the county has 33 million in overcollected and unspent money. That overcollected part really caught our attention. So we found out exactly what that means and if it's accurate to call it overcollected. The tax resources we're talking about were generated in 2021, the first year of Metro's supportive housing services tax that goes to help end homelessness in Washington, Clackamas, and Multnomah counties. Metro voters approved the tax in May of 2020. The voters approved this tax as a 1% tax on incomes above $200,000 and a small tax on um, large businesses. Nick Christensen says when the measure was referred to voters, Metro projected it would raise $250 million a year. We made the initial projections on this measure in February of 2020. Uh, three weeks later, our world changed and, you know, we didn't know when it was going to recover what the world would look like. The pandemic hurt a lot of things, including the economy. So Metro adjusted expectations for the 1% tax in October of 2020, estimating it would raise 115 million in its first year. By May of 2021, the estimate went to 180 million. And that's what counties based their budgets on as they came up with homeless crisis plans. It wasn't until April of 2022, after most had paid their taxes, that Metro found it had collected more than $235 million, about $55 million more than what it last forecast. So that's where the mayor's press release comes in, calling on Multnomah County to put up $21 million to the camp cause, saying the county has over $33 million in both over-collected and underspent resources. But nobody required to pay paid more than the 1% tax voters approved. It's not fair to call it an overtax. What it really is is a sign of a healthy economy and a sign that um, our recovery out of COVID is doing better, at least for the high income earners and large businesses that are paying this tax around the region. These tax dollars are going to work right now all over the, the metro area, from Forest Grove to Troutdale, from Wilsonville to Portland. Um, people who need help are getting help, and bit by bit, we're trying to address this crisis on our streets. In fact, Christensen says the money that's been raised so far allows counties to put some in reserve for leaner years and has already helped get 1,600 homeless people off the streets. It also provides eviction protection services for 9,000 people in danger of losing housing. Well, Multnomah County is moving forward with a proposal to ban selling flavored tobacco and nicotine products. Commissioners voted in favor of it this week after the first reading. They'll look it over a second time on December 15th. If it ultimately passes, the ban would start in January of 2024. Supporters say the goal is to keep tobacco away from kids and teens. Opponents worry about the impact on businesses. Now, Washington County passed a similar ban last year, but a judge overturned it. The county is appealing that decision. Well, still to come this morning, it's time to get in the holiday spirit. Uh, for a lot of families, the first weekend of December means it's time to get a Christmas tree. So how's business this year? And what do they cost? We'll show you 